rainforests are the lungs of the earth. I mean, well, the reverse of lungs of the earth, if you like. They're taking in carbon dioxide. They're actually using the dangerous carbon dioxide and producing oxygen for us, upon which all life depends. Everything we do here as consumers affects, uh, affects, affects the rainforest and affects how, how land is used over, overseas because we buy so much uh, of our food from, from overseas. I mean, there are some very obvious routes whereby, you know, so people might be using products which use tropical hardwoods which have been illegally harvested, um, and that obviously has a very direct link. Uh, it could be through uh, eating um, excessive amounts of meat. There are some uh, people that basically cut down the rainforest in order to, to, to grow a biofuel crop. We need to be on our, on our guard and we need to be much critical and we need to be looking towards local resources of food and supplies. Uh, my name is Jim Twine and I'm a local farmer. These are North Devon cattle that we've taken from our farm which is about eight miles away and there's six of them grazing here and what we're really trying to do is recreate the kind of more natural habitat that there would have been at Lee Woods um, over a hundred years ago. So one of the real principles of organic agriculture is that the system is as sustainable um, uh, and local as possible. So in our case, that means that we produce all the livestock's feed from the farm, whether that's the grass that they eat in the summer, the grass that we cut and then conserve and feed to them in the winter, or the small amount of cereals that we also feed to them. All of that comes from the farm, which means that we're really in control of the system and it is as, as a sustainable um, and as holistic a system as possible. The key to the sustainability of the overall system is that those livestock are fed on grass-based diets and that they're not fed on cheap imported cereals or proteins like soya, for example, that are doing huge untold damage in terms of destruction of the rainforest, which will have a really massive impact on potentially life as we know it on the planet. We were probably selling the vast majority of our products to the supermarkets and during the course of the last few years our, our aim has really been to try to localise those sales as much as possible. Possible. So we have a local box scheme, we sell through local shops and we sell to schools in Bristol and also restaurants. Well I think the key is that people have to eat less meat, you know, and I say that as a livestock farmer, but the, the, what's essential is that when they eat that meat that it's produced from animals that have been really, that are really healthy, systems that are sustainable and that we need to eat better quality meat when we actually buy it. We're really, really, really keen here at St. Werberg's to actually work with the environment. I mean, we do have a, a, a nature reserve just down the road as part of our farm conservation area. And so it's really important to us to make sure that, that you know, everything is sustainable, not only our farm, but of course the economy around us, the environment around us, and, and globally as well. Yeah, and if you start small, things spread, and sustainability is like that. But it's nothing new. We're going back to how things were farmed 700 years ago. But of course, you know, people live busy lives and there's still a lot of people who need convincing that actually it's better to actually grow something in your back garden. Even if it's um, a wooden barrel with some potato plants in it, you know, really easy to grow. You know, you're better off doing that than buying a sack full of spuds from your, your local supermarket. It's more fun growing your own stuff and putting it on your table than going to Tesco's. Sorry Tesco's, but it's true, any supermarket, you know, it's, it's better pottering in your garden, digging out your vegetables, sitting down and eating them, they taste so much better, it's great. The, the meat that we grow on our farm tastes so much better, you know, mm. we have people queuing up for our food when we, when we have it ready. So, yeah, I think it's a really, really sensible thing for everybody to be getting into. You know, it would just save the environment and it would save everybody a fortune. The cafe is run by Leona uh, and she's done actually brilliant in the last five years, taking the cafe to new heights and has been recognised as one of the best little places to eat in Bristol in the South West. Um, so yeah, she uses the produce as much as we can produce, she will use. I think everyone has their passion and I suppose my passion is food, so then wanting to share that with people. I suppose the enjoyment of the first strawberry of the season, how it tastes, um, and knowing that in the darks of February I will dream about the fact that strawberry is going to hit my mouth in the end of May and it's going to taste amazing. But also working with the seasons and living by the seasons, it just feels a very natural, wholesome way to live.
I suppose what we do is try to minimise our impact on the environment um, by sourcing food from as local as we can, by supporting small producers who care about the land that they farm or they care about the animals that they farm. I'm not against importing food that we can't produce in our own country. I am really against importing food that we can produce in our own country at certain times. So obviously things, coffee, tea, we can't produce it here, so we have to import it. And by importing it, we provide economies to other countries. But then there's also, we should do that on a fair basis. We should pay a fair price. The project we're running is called the Happy City Initiative. And the idea is that we, by focusing on happiness, you start talking about what matters. And then it doesn't matter whether you're passionate about rainforests, it could be anything at all, immigration. Um, as soon as you start talking about happiness, you start talking about the things that connect us up. In the same way as you're highlighting now, there's a connection between the rainforests and Bristol. And then you can make a difference because you can start having conversations about, well, if these things matter, how can I make it better? I need to work with what works. There are lots of solutions.